Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my third episode. My name is Tapio Mafura, and I've got a special guest today, a teammate of mine, Aiden Davis. Aiden, welcome to my podcast. Thanks a lot for having me, bro. It's a pleasure, brother. It's a pleasure having you here. And without further ado, we're going to get right into it. Uh, can you start by telling us who you are? How did you get to where you are right now? Where did your rugby career start? And yeah, you can take it from there. So, my name is Aiden Davis. Um, I'm from the Eastern Cape, a small town called Utenaik. Rugby started young age, yes, I think at six, started playing rugby. Um, after school, I went to, I was in school at Daniel Pinar, that's a small school in Utene. Mm -hmm. After that, went to the Kings, Southern Kings for four years. Yeah. Played there, uh, played two years, SA under 20. And then I went to France for two years, played for Toulon my first year. Second year, I played for Bayonne. And yeah, now I'm at the Free State. That's awesome. Eh? I'm actually learning some stuff I didn't know about you. Yeah. I didn't know you went to France. Yeah. How was that experience in France? Good, eh? different. Is it? Yeah, they, it's a different lifestyle every day. Yeah. Um, but I enjoyed it a lot. That's awesome, man. Can you speak some French? Uh, not a l <laughs> <laughs> No, putting me on the spot, yeah, but no, I can, <laughs> I can understand a lot, but um, speaking is different. For a player, when you are looking to become a professional, what is it that you need to do and what is it that you have to maintain to stay a professional? And I mean, we've seen a lot of players that tried to make it, but they didn't get there. Or players that were professionals, but they didn't make it. What can you say? I think one thing that comes to mind is discipline. Eh? Um, that's one thing I learned in France as well. Playing with big names like Matt Gitto, Leo, Penny. Wow. That Those guys have 100 plus caps and Discipline is a massive thing for them. Yeah. Um, work rate, I would say, and because rugby is, as you know, up and down, you don't get picked, and a lot of guys said, no, this is not for me. That is true. So just continuing working hard and having that discipline, eh? Yeah. And with that being said, I mean, the coronavirus impacted us a lot. I mean, we were on a season where we were really doing well, and then everything just had to stop. But... Um, Luckily, now we're back into training. What are your thoughts on us going back to the tournament we're going to be playing? We don't know what we're going to be playing. I mean, we know the Curry Cup is coming at the end of this month, maybe. Um, Pro 14, we still don't know if we're in or not. Uh, what are your thoughts on us going back? It's uncertain times. Eh? Jeez, I think um, we as rugby players is the least as affected. Um, I mean, people are getting, yes, it's, it's tough out there. Yeah. Um, not only just for rugby players, but just people losing their jobs and stuff. But regarding the rugby, um, I don't know what competition we're going to play. Hopefully it's Curry Cup and hopefully it's soon. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's uncertain times and we just got to keep keep pushing. Is that all you have to say? I mean, aren't you excited? <laughs> I'm excited, I know I'm but excited. I don't want to get too excited <laughs> because then, yeah. like, you know, with the president announcing stuff, a week later, he said, True. no, it's, we're going back to level five. So, Did you say that? No, 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 I'm just oh, joking. Hey, but, hey. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't, do don't want to get too excited. <laughs> don't do that to me. <laughs> right, moving uh, a little bit away from the rugby, I just want to ask you about your drip, man. For those that don't know what drip is, it's the way that you dress and the way that you look. And let me tell you, man, Aiden, ooh, <laughs> on his day, Aiden, you look good, bro. I want you to give me a little bit about uh, a little bit of insight about how uh, how you dress and the role models that you maybe have and the way you look. Because I mean, I'm gonna say it, man. It's not racism, but for not all white, guy. not all white, <laughs> yeah, not all white guys look the way that you that. do, bro. I you thought you were gonna bro. say that. Give us a little bit of insight on that. Uh, please, I think the two years in France helped me a lot, eh? Um, yeah. Especially with things just being affordable there. Yeah. Like shoes and proper clothes and stuff. True. So I think that helped me a lot and. Guys I looked, not look up to, but yeah. styles I like is guys like Ari Savia, Quade Cooper. Yeah. There's a guy called Ice, um, the Ice Project. It's yeah. a podcast I listen to a lot. Um, yeah, and just being comfortable, eh? That's awesome. And you mentioned some big names there, eh? I want to talk about uh, your marriage life. I, know, I understand you are married. And tell married? Me, yes. Tell, tell us a little bit more about that. Uh, where did you meet your wife and how long have you guys been together and how's that going? Awesome, eh? I've been married for one year now. I uh, got married like last year, June. Congrats, man. Thanks a lot, man. Um, yeah, I met my wife. I played, I was still playing for the Southern Kings at that time. Yeah. So I played super happy against the Lions in Joburg. And my friend afterwards come in, came and fetched me. Um, yeah. And she was in the car. 
because it's mutual friends and just met her through him and kicked it off. That's and that awesome. was like five years ago. Wow, time and, flies, eh? Yeah, and then she, she went to France with me, stayed wow. with France with me in, for two years. Yeah. That helped a lot, That's helped awesome. a lot with the relationship. Yeah. So, yeah, the That's rest awesome. is history. That's awesome, man. And um, I just want to say that when I met you, I think you were injured and I think you were still getting back to, or I think you got injured when we met. And then mm. um, <clears throat> in the time that I've known you, I've seen you getting back to uh, 100% and trying just to, you know, recover. And uh, I, I just need to say that I admire the way that you've gotten back. And can you tell us what it is that motivated you to get back to 100% when you were injured and how the rehab life is? Yeah, I think, yes, that when we first met, um, I think I was diagnosed with cancer. Yeah. And that was a huge shock for, for the body and just for the, I thought about rugby, like, am I going to be able to train and stuff? Yeah. Um, fortunately, I was lo- one of the lucky ones, so I didn't have to go through chemo and all that terrible stuff. Yeah. And then just I felt good, recovered from the cancer stuff, and then I broke my leg and I thought, what? That was, that was shocking. Yeah, like, yes, I, I think you remember that. you were like yeah. next to me on the field as well. Yeah. And coming back from that, like I said previously, just having the discipline. Um, rugby is really a thing I love to do and want to do. Yeah. So I think that that made it easier for me to, to work hard, especially when no one's watching. Yeah. And Yeah, people don't see how hard you work. I mean, exactly. They only see the, you don't get the recognition result. for it as True. well. So yeah. Yeah, just the hard work and staying disciplined. And with that being said, have you ever thought or felt like, you know, you were at a time where you thought maybe, nah, you're down with rugby and you had to do something else? Yes, a lot, eh? I think especially when you don't get picked. Yeah. Like week after week and you're sitting there in the team room and different guys are getting jerseys above you and you're sitting there and you're not, not getting picked. Yeah. Then you're going home and you speak to your wife and you're like, yes, is this the... Is it really for me? And yeah, but oh, that lasts for like five minutes and then you get over yourself. <laughs> yeah. Get back to work. Yeah, because of the love of it. Exactly. And if you weren't playing rugby, do you know what you'd be doing? Yes, that's a difficult one, eh? Um, that's what everyone is saying. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. But definitely something in the business, eh? Um, I love business, love marketing. Yeah. Um, so something in that direction. That's awesome. Did you study business? Uh, I did study business, yeah. Uh, that's awesome. And um, if you had to give some advice to some up-and-coming rugby players or a younger version of yourself, maybe some knowledge that you didn't know when you were young starting out, what would you say? I would say if that's the old saying, like, hard work pays off. And I know it's a cliche, but that's the thing that always worked for me um, yeah. from professional luck I think I was 19 when I first started playing professional yeah and that's the thing that always worked that's awesome man thank you for the wise words I appreciate you that was everything and um, before you go I just want to thank you for joining me on my podcast and um, I want to thank Career Magazine for hosting this and hopefully it comes out amazing and uh, the, the viewers love it thanks, thanks a lot man thanks for having me appreciate you man, Cheers, man.